Hello and welcome. I am Catherine Maggs and this is Continuing the Conversation, a conversation series dedicated specifically to continuing the conversation on the International Women's Day theme. And this year, the campaign theme is Break the Bias. Like all years past, there is a lot of conversation and frenzy leading up to and during the week that International Women's Day actually falls. This is usually where the conversation ends until the next year. I'm continuing the conversation by interviewing amazing humans around the world to better understand what break the bias means to different people in different circumstances, how they see bias play out in their life and what they are doing both personally and within their organisations to break the bias. If you'd like to continue the conversation with me, please send me a message or an email. Today, I'm chatting with Tim Anderson. Tim is a results-driven customer experience strategist, a versatile innovator and ecosystem builder with proven experience in generating valuable strategic insights, using design to develop end-to-end -end customer experience and solutions for impactful digital transformation, delivering business outcomes and driving strategic change across distributed workforces. Amongst many other things, he's also the FinTech Queensland founder, a hackathon facilitator, and a drinker of whiskey. Please join us as we discuss the importance of reconnecting with our inner child, asking better questions, and testing our assumptions, and how they all play a role in outing our bias. And also how our language subconsciously reinforces existing bias. Let's get chatting. Thank you, Tim, and welcome. Thank you for having me. This is going to be lots of fun. It is. I'm really looking forward to it. So as you know, we are here today to discuss breaking the bias. What's it all about? What does it mean to us? And what are the things that we're doing to try and attempt to break the bias? I guess unconscious bias is a term that has been floating around in the corporate terminology for many years now. Tim, when you hear the word bias, what comes to mind? Well, it's really interesting. Uh, when I, what, my first thoughts on it, and let's just talk like a, um, uh, like I'm a 12 year old boy and thinks I've done something wrong, I'm biased you know, I'm prejudiced yeah. and something like that. Um, and I, I suppose it was only, um, I say recently, but, you know, time's a bit of a spectrum. I'm not exactly sure when it was. I'm sure it was many, many years ago now. <laughs> um, I kind of realised through working with designers that um, it's not necessarily you've done something wrong, but it's a really good opportunity to expand your thoughts um, and expand your processes and how you approach things. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I love that. That's a really great spin on it. It's mm. an opportunity to learn. How do you or, or what has helped you become consciously aware of what your own personal biases are? I think it, it comes back to just, questioning techniques so everything i've learned over the past say 10 years has been learned through design and design principles and one of the key ones there is what are you assuming by by presenting this idea or or presenting this question what are your assumptions in that um and by unpacking that you get to ask better questions and you can get down to the root of what's actually happening rather than your perception of it that's veiled in these own biases that you've got. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. And you're right, questions are so important. Mm. We don't ask questions enough mm. for fear of looking stupid, I guess. Yeah. And <laughs> we certainly don't ask enough questions of ourselves personally. Yes, I, I was just reading an article the other day that was it, it just one line and it stuck out to me. It was like, kids ask the question why so much. Now, we have a fear 
of asking why and looking stupid, looking mm-hmm. like you don't know what you're talking about, like a child. But the way that this article framed it is like the child asks why so I can get context and learn. Yet we think we're smart, so we don't ask for context and don't ask for why. So we're not actually learning anything. So we're not as smart. Yeah. It's all that we want to look smart, but not actually be smart. Yeah. And it's, it's a weird human condition that we have. It is, but it's obviously something we're taught at some because mm-hmm. it's the same as as making mistakes or yep. you know that fear of failing. It's how we learn. How many times do we fail to sit up as babies before we finally sit up? Mm-hmm. It, that making mistakes, like asking questions, is how we learn. Isn't it fascinating? Yeah, there's another conversation I just had today with uh, one of my team and we were talking about a project that we've got and there's some items, there's probably about, let's just say there's over 30 items or initiatives on this this program of work that we've got. And um, I'd said uh, a couple of weeks ago that I, I really don't want any of these to be stalled for the sake of them being stalled. I, we really need to push and lead these. And today she asked the question going, so we've had a conversation about some of these items getting stopped, getting you know moved on, pivoting, transformed. How, how should we frame that? And she, and she was talking from a like a, a afraid to fail point of view, mm. afraid that I might go, no, 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 we've got to push forward with these things. And it was like, I don't know, no, no. Stall is where we, we're not getting to it because someone goes, oh, well, let's put on a backlog and get it to it later. If we actually do something and decide that that's a crap idea and we yeah. stop it, perfect. That's the mm-hmm. outcome we want because we've taken action, we've learned that we better not do that and then we can move on. Or we can go, we've done this much. Mm, no, that didn't quite work. We're going to move off in this direction and try B instead of A. Or maybe we'll do C, you know. Um, so, so long as you, you kind of, understand that mm-hmm. failing is part of it right failing yeah, is part of it. yeah and part ego of it. plays such a big part in yeah. that as well doesn't yeah. it because yeah. as you said before we know everything yeah or we like to have a outward perception that we know everything because that's important to us and, and mm. to our ego we are getting slightly off track. It is still a yeah, fascinating sorry. conversation. Yeah. No, don't apologize. That was my fault. Squirrel. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Not at all. <clears throat> have you ever caught yourself out or had somebody else catch you out and point out to you that you are coming from a, a state of bias or a, or a bias opinion? I don't think I've been caught out by someone as such, uh, but it, I, I do catch myself out enough. And I, my tendency is, is when I get tired and I just want to get the shit done. Yeah. And the brain just goes, bang, here's the easiest thing. Here's the easiest option. And it's not the easiest option. It's the easiest option for my brain to process. Exactly, right? because it's habitual. Exactly. So I'm wasting the least amount of energy and mm. bang, 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 we can just get it done. What are some examples that you can top of mind think of and share with our audience? Oh, so let's go back to this um, program of work we've got going. Um, There's been a couple of times where there's been lots of good conversation and I say good facetiously, (laughs) (laughs) but there's no action and we've got to get stuff done and I'm getting really tired and I'll tend to to be going, great, okay, so what are the five actions that we're going to do? And everyone's still in that space Mm -hmm. of discussing and I'm like, I don't know, let's go. Okay, so, and then I'll take control and go, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. Cool, done, bang. And everyone I can see is going, yeah, that's that's one way of doing it. And um, <laughs> yes, he knows what he's doing. So we will let Tim do that. And then I, I suppose I, I see the feedback and I'm like, hang on a second. That was just a suggestion. <laughs> and I try to pull myself back and go, so that is one option. What's another option? Let's get five options done. Mm-hmm. So I've been able to 
move to that action space or get the people that I'm working with to move that action space without my own biases in there or I try to pull my biases back. Is this making sense? Yeah, it is. It is. It's like catching myself in the moment. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're observing the feedback that, mm-hmm. hang on a minute, I've, yeah, I've played mm-hmm. out a habitual bias here and I need to reverse that in some way or navigate yeah. it sideways. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. In your career thus far, mm-hmm. Have you ever seen bias play out in your own, you know, whether it's your advancement or attempt to advance your career in a way? Have you ever seen it play out for you personally or colleagues and impact your career? Yeah, here's a really, really interesting story. I suppose this one impacted me personally in how I viewed the world. This is really, really interesting. So this is early on in my leadership journey, um, my leader came to me and went, hey, Tim, there's this program. It's like an emerging leaders program that's come up and I've read everything on it. Yeah. And it just ticks all the boxes and you should definitely be doing this. You would be perfect for that. Sent me some info. I read through it. And uh, I went, this this sounds bloody amazing. This is great. Thank you for this opportunity. And um, then I went back to him and said, yeah, I, I would love to do this. And then he said, I'm really sorry, Tim. Um, this is actually a women in leadership thing and you can't participate. Yeah. And, and it was like a, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. The, the, the this is actually how it feels to be displaced from something that you really want to do. Oh my God. And it sort of like hit home that, you know, obviously my leader and I had a bias. I was like, here's a leadership thing. Let's, let's, you know, mm, yeah, that's right. Do this. And, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that opened my eyes. There was another uh, thing that happened a year or so after that as well, where I was talking with uh, a community leader <clears throat> in the entrepreneurial community here. And there were a couple of people there and we were talking just about, um, you know, women's events. And uh, one of the people there was saying, well, if, if women's events are women only, then men don't get an actual opportunity to learn to be around women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, face value, yes. True. Having said that, though, I'm sure men have ample opportunity to to learn to be (laughs) women. But, I mean, I'm simplifying what he was saying and he was presenting a good case to say, hey, if if it's all about inclusivity and bringing everyone together, Mm. then discluding um, a, a certain segment isn't necessarily a good thing in his opinion. Yeah. And it was quite interesting because this um, community leader she said, but you do understand that they need some space for them. Yeah. Well, just for them. Isn't that okay? And it was just that flipped perspective to say, instead of going, if we're all about equality and bringing everyone together, mm you know, trying to pull people off. It's like, oh, no, but each individual person in there needs space in, you know, what what makes them feel comfortable. And if that makes them feel comfortable, then then that's that's fantastic. Um, Don't know I'm telling you stories, but I think those two moments had uh, a big impact on on my opening my eyes to go, oh, yeah, let's see it from someone else's perspective for a change, Tim. And I think it's, I think both of those examples are really interesting because, there is a line, a fine line, where you could can potentially take the gender argument a little too far. So, you know, and I'll use the, your first example around the women's only leadership program. It's important to have, as you say, it's important for people to have space, space for themselves where they feel comfortable. Mm. So we're doing the right thing by creating these programs and giving women 
an opportunity to help close that, that gender gap. But are we doing it at the exclusion of, and, and as a result of that, creating a divide? Mm. So it's such a, we need to, we need these programs. Mm. We need to allow people to have space to connect, speak where they feel safe, to speak genuinely and authentically. But at the same time, we, we don't want to create that division. We still mm. need to be able to bring everybody on that journey and help both, well, not just both, but all genders mm. and diversity understand each mm. other's stories. So how yeah, do I we would, create I that? Mm. How do we create I that? Would agree they all feel like... safe to come and do mm. that. Well, I think it's not necessarily the programs. Mm. Like, I agree with you. It's not the programs. It's the delivery. <clears throat> so I, I have had a, a, a negative experience where, um, you know, a, a, a boss has come in, happened to be female, and she was like, oh, this is a bit of a boys club. So um, my previous manager was a was a boy. Um, and, uh, yeah, for some reason she was like, okay, Tim, we're, we're going to be having our one-on-ones in the office. We're not going to the the pub next door to have a beer over lunch to have one-on-ones and we're not having coffee and stuff like that because this is no longer a boys club and like okay that that's totally cool um <clears throat> what disappointed me was though that she would take the female leaders <laughs> to oh. coffee or something like that mm. so i think it's not necessarily the programs that cause people to be disconnected i think it's how they're delivered because if you say to me you want to get rid of boys club yeah definitely yeah definitely yeah um but but um how you deliver that is another another story completely so yeah and consistency like there was no consistency in that message or behavior at least the Mm. behavior did not model the the message yeah Mm. You have shared with us one example of of where you have consciously identified your acting from bias and and shifted. Are there any specific things that you do, techniques, tools, strategies that you use to be more conscious of what your bias are, to help you break out of those habitual behaviours? Yeah, I think so. One thing that I've adopted... um, recently uh when i was hiring is when i'm re- uh, using gender neutral pronouns <laughs> yes <clears throat> so whenever i'm uh, going through and reviewing and putting comments on uh, a resume it's all gender neutral all the time it is they them regardless i know who they are mm. Oh, well, I assume because there's a name they haven't actually told me no. how they to identify. Um, so once again, I'm not going to assume. I'm going to go with something that's completely gender neutral. And therefore, I find myself not talking about he, she, which can have some biases, but it's just like the candidate, mm. they, them. Um, and I, I've incorporated that into a lot of my customer experience design. Um, and then when I'm talking to teams, it might be even a little thing. And I'm not good to pick pick someone up by going hey guys oh that's probably the wrong um gendered word to say there but i think there's something there is something subconscious i know for me where i go i'm going to make an actual effort to change my own brain chemistry Mm. to let's get away from that biased masculine language and language is so important Mm. so Mm. important we Mm. The words that we've been using subconsciously for our entire lives, and yeah. I am very challenged with that at the moment because mm-hmm. I have a little granddaughter who's just mm-hmm. turned two. And so she's being raised in a very, you know, uh, non gender, non. Um, race non like she's being raised as a human and we are all human and although I was 
very conscious of that when I was raising my children. Language wasn't something I was as conscious about, but it's very, very prominent in helping co-raise my granddaughter because every time I say something wrong, my daughter very quickly jumps on it. So, you know, how easily the words good girl come Mm. out of your mouth when she does something you're proud of. Yeah. It's just instant. And so I have, I'm not completely successful. It still slips out every now and then, but it's gone from, you know, probably every time I see her to once in a blue moon. But it's incredible the power that language has. It's the habit, right? You were just saying it before, it's the habit. You see your granddaughter do something that you want to praise and the simplest, easiest praise, good girl. Yeah. Right. Instead of um, having that sort of stop to think. What am I praising? Another way of praising. Yeah, Yeah. and it's no different to being an effective leader and giving effective feedback, right? Mm. Instead of just saying, good job, you did a great job there, it's Mm. what what was it about what they did that was good and so it's the same with raising my granddaughter it's so what am i praising here that was really great listening thank you Mm. you know thank you for helping me i really appreciate that so it's yeah nothing to do with gender whether she's a girl or a boy or otherwise no i know but the connotations that raises with those Mm gender-specific words that we tend to drum into Mm. children at a young age. What sort of things are your organisation doing in relation to breaking down the bias within their leaders and their their people? Wow. Um, I could could probably talk on this for a long time. <laughs> so obviously um, Pride Month was just uh, last month. Uh, we had a huge um, month-long sort of celebrations and communications that went out. Um, oh, excellent. Uh, um, badges, uh, you know, you have your badges and your morning teas and all of this, but, but more so um, the conversations that happened and the stories that were shared. So there were lots of uh, really brave people that shared their stories through that process. And um, what was heartening was the people commenting on it. And it, and it was a thank you for sharing. I, I Just one that came to mind, the CEO was the first person to comment on this, saying that, um, you know, I've known you for, for so long and it's just fantastic to see you being comfortable and you keep it all up. So, you know, um, that sort of actual words and conversations it's just fantastic. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. A, a to connect- give people a platform that they feel safe to do that yeah. and mm. not feel that there could be consequences. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. It's just amazing. Um, recently, we've um, launched uh, some graduate programs in our tech space particularly and the, the scholarships that are on offer there. Uh, for people who are, you know, outside of the the usual white male, <laughs> me with my privilege sitting here. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so, so there's a lot of programs in that space that are faced on how do we get people involved who are potentially, you know, not, not a part of the conversation at the moment. Uh, just last week, we had a hackathon, a connectathon, um, which the, the three focuses for the, the hackathon were about women in digital, um, indigenous tech and how we can support people in the indigenous community and um, uh, people who are otherwise displaced from the gaming community. Um, so neurodivergent yeah. uh, people who have a different experience of life. So, you know, we've got a fair few initiatives that um, we're looking at to try to break away from our traditional way of thinking. Mm-hmm. That's uh, brilliant. Yeah. So yeah. exciting. Yeah. Exciting yeah. time. Actually, it's actually a really uh, good company to be in at the moment because of the, the 
but we're at this scale point. So we've got all of these people who've been with the company for a long time and been in the industry for a long time. So you've got that really good solid base of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then there's all of these new people coming in. Um, <clears throat> so it's just, just fascinating catalyst of fresh ideas and experience and and my experience of, of the company at this point in time is that um everyone who's been there for a while is so welcoming of let's look at something new yeah brilliant. So i think that from a um a top-down perspective um the the executive team's done a, a good job of having we're establishing that right culture Right. it's something that you constantly have to work at it's not something that you set and forget yeah we've done that we've had the morning tea let's move yeah. on no that's right it, it yeah. is constant and mm. and consistency is mm. ac across the board is so important as mm. well oh, i love it so good mm. Why do you actually personally think that breaking the bias is so important? Why should we be talking about it? Why should we be consciously choosing to, to break our bias? Why? Like I said earlier, from a design perspective, you just open yourself up to so many more opportunities when you're not held back by a staid way of thinking. Right. And, and I'm not saying that a staid way of thinking is, is bad. I'm saying that a staid way of thinking is just the body trying to preserve its energy. Right? It doesn't want to expend any extra energy looking at other things over here. Um, but then it's a sort of this vicious circle, right? If you don't expend that energy, you don't try new things, you don't grow and learn. So you're just on this downward spiral. So it, it's, um, for me, that's what I'm passionate about. It's like I love the creativity of coming up with new ideas. And when I started to hearing about this, you know, what are your assumptions? What are your biases? You're like, oh, shit. Oh, wow. Well, I've been... I've been acting in this way all of this time because I had these beliefs, these thoughts, because I've, you know, come from this position. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, how much better can I perform, be, do, if I try to question myself every time I'm doing something to go, right, what am I assuming here? What is the bias that I've got at play here? What can I put in place to stop that? It's, it's, it's just... I don't know. For me, it's hygiene. It's it's, it's fitness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you made a really good point. If we're not learning and we're not growing, we essentially are <clears throat> dying. Mm. And that's all, all living things on earth. If they're not growing and thriving and becoming something bigger and better, then mm. they're disintegrating. Mm. Um, so we're not... Yeah, we're not stimulating our brains or our, our bodies. I mm. love that. This is the perfect question for you. Why is it so important, not just for yourself, but for any organisation that designs product or policy or frameworks or support systems, why is it important that we take bias into account when we are designing those things? It's, for me, it's the assumptions, right? If you aren't putting actual transparent written steps in to say, how are we going to alleviate this? I.e., me personally, I went and said, while I'm reviewing these applications, I am only using gender neutral pronouns in all of my comments, no matter how I do it. And that sets my own mind up to go, I'm going to break any bias I've got there for what I think and perceive this role needs from a gender perspective, as if a role is ever gendered, right? But, you know, we're stupid. Yeah. We think these two <laughs> things. If you're not doing that, then essentially you're just like going, oh, well, whatever happens, happens, right? <clears throat> and that's not planning. That's not process, right? Because we know that this happens. We know that people have their biases. And we know that a lot of it is unconscious. It's not malicious in most cases. No. 
So if we're not <clears throat> putting something in place, we're basically saying, meh, we're just going to keep perpetuating the same stuff. Mm. And that just seems a bit silly. Yeah. Knowing that we've got this, this tendency and we know we should do something to do about it. We, we, we know we should do something about it, but we just go, meh. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And keep designing things that... <clears throat> support or benefit the majority mm. yeah. because you're not taking those into account yeah and i think it's asking the question